Nina Simone has a, a quote where she says that uh, she believes that it's an artist's responsibility to reflect the times. So um, being that we are in this time, it's, it's, it's unprecedented. It's a, a time like no other uh, that none of us have seen before. Um, it directly impacts my art. It directly impacts the art of every other artist. Um, I'm a spoken word artist, but um, so naturally words come to me. Um, and when you are impacted um, by society as a whole, uh, sometimes those words come out as anger. Sometimes those words come out as frustration. So it, it directly impacts um, my art, and I believe it does uh, every other artist as well. The times and what's going on um, is a partner to my art. Like if, if nothing was ever going on, I would have no art. I would have nothing, um, good or bad. So um, art shapes, ev uh, everything is affected by uh, my art, my art. Like everything that's going on around it is the, it, it, the art is the product of that. So everything is uh, um, relative to my art and affected by my art. I don't know how it would impact my personal art necessarily, um, but I definitely see it impacting my life and how I kind of exist and treat people and look at you know, current events and things like that. Um, I grew up in a pretty sheltered space. My parents were pretty um, liberal and you know, love everyone, um, but I lived in a primarily Caucasian gated community, went to a primarily Caucasian high school, you know, um, but you see a lot of things and you leave and go to college and you're in a city, you know, it, so it doesn't necessarily impact my art, but certainly impacts my life. My art has, uh, based on what I just said, that my art has taken on a more, not so much political, but I think I'm, I'm more, um, direct in how I use abstraction to, to portray things that are relevant to our tangible world. And so I'm very, uh, when, I, when I came across uh, Mark Bradford's uh, work and he talked about uh, social abstraction, completely uh, resonated with me because uh, it was a way to use abstraction to 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 talk to social concerns and uh, and still be true to your to your sense of why abstract thought and abstract intellect is important and so uh, that's where I feel that it's also my my duty to uh, go further into the vein of social abstraction with my work and so now uh, I'm using more imagery and I'm embedding more imagery that's related to current events as well and text and lit, uh, language uh, not just English but all types of language not just uh, language that people speak and write but also mathematics also uh, hieroglyphics these types of things so because my, my overarching goal what I think is most important is that we we understand empathy that we embrace empathy and that we understand that we need to connect to all cultures on this planet so that we will be better humans and uh, so I these are the kind of things I'm thinking about in my work going forward um, I'm not an artist but uh, I would imagine that the state of America right now would either produce some very dark, very unsettling art. I think could, could, you could see that quite easily. Uh, but I also imagine that um, you, could, you could have some optimistic people that maybe want to see something different than what reality is painting them and maybe they could create something beyond what we're seeing right now. Um, I think that it can impact it positively. Um, one thing that I have learned as a, an Afro-focused dancer, there was not a standard before. And with there being no standard before, people didn't really understand it or find it valuable which was somewhat beneficial because if you over intellectualize it, then we lose the essence of it. Um, but there seems to be now an increase an increasing appreciation for it. So I think with that vision, 
and hopefully we're heading there. I can see where we're heading there. Um, it's more respected as a very varied, a very unique, a very um, intricate art form that has a lot to inform society about just how we interact with each other as human beings. And it will be seen as something of value. Um, and more and more Afro dance artists will be performing at places like MOCA, and, you know, because it's a valuable form of art. Um, well, I'm a dancer, classically trained. Um, I've danced ballet for the last, oh God. Oh, it's been a long time. For the last 20 plus years. Um, and so it's, I'm a classical artist that rolls around in, you know, groups that subscribe to the classical way of doing things. And in my own cultural tradition, we have things that are classic to us. Um, I always love to use this, you know, the choir coming down the aisle, singing a song with their two step, you know, that's like a classic thing for most African-American churches, you know, the ushers and they're all white standing there, you know, that's classic. And so in the community, there are classic pillars too. Um, I would love to see two cultures mix, two classic tr traditions um, in one arena, in one setting, on, on, in one building. Um, the closest I've gotten to that was working for Ballet Nick Dance Company in Atlanta, Georgia, where they fused classical ballet with African, um, West African dance and movements. And they fused it and it worked and they stayed true and they weren't disrespectful. Um, if it blended well, great. If it didn't, even better, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I think for my art form, it would be bringing classical ballet into an urban setting and making sure that neither one disrespects the tradition that both of them have and come with. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just like a lot of the other artists here in Jacksonville, so a lot of my work has to do with, with the social climate. Um, so it absolutely affects my art. Um, I make work about black women. I am embarking upon a body of work that's about black girlhood and um, how we are teaching them to make decisions for themselves, how we are teaching them to um, express anger and express fear. Um, because, you know, right now we live in a world that doesn't really acknowledge black girls fear and black girls pain. So I am really embarking on a project that gives them the space for that. And, um, you know, I hope that in doing so, I can sort of make available to them just sort of like a way out, an option um, to reconsider how the world considers them. Wow. wow. That, that vision. I think that that's... As far as being an artist, I think that that's kind of like a, that's a tricky one because as an artist, you can kind of, you know, push for that vision and try to recreate that vision, which is very important. And there's various artists that do that very well. And it's, and it's incredible. But I think another part of seeing that vision is to kind of reflect what's actually happening right now, you know, um, to really spell out for people what's happening in the streets, what's happening in culture today, um, especially in 2020 in this crazy kind of time. I think when we're all working together, it allows more opportunities for us to explore more avenues of connecting with one another. We're already at a point where we're creating connections with people who are far different from us. And I think that allows for a better future for us to recognize that we don't have to have separation in order to create a better world. We can be proud of who we are and still make a better life for ourselves. I think it would be just that, man. I, I, th I think it would, I think it would um, like, I guess to kind of put it in, um, to put it in food terms, because that's what I relate to the most, I, I like to eat. Um, I, I would say it would be the, the best bowl of New Orleans gumbo soup that you have ever had. Um, it, 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 my, my future, my, my, my artistic development, um, everything of what I just said affects my art. Um, 
And if art in and of itself is nothing but a reflection of society and, and your beliefs, um, I think my art would reflect everything that I just stated earlier in terms of what I'm doing right now, uh, which is family, uh, community, uh, Christ, um, patience, um, being able to, 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 um, to, to, to possess long suffering, um, because anything that is worth anything really takes time, uh, patience and time. I, j I just told that to my students yesterday that, um, the two strongest warriors are patience and time. And that's what I've been giving the city. That's what I've been giving my, my family. And more importantly, that's what I've been giving myself. Um, because you know, in a society now where you could just have everything at the click of a button, you can easily just become impatient. Um, but I think for everything, um, again, of what I said earlier, it's, it's, it's all impacting me and, I, and I'm, I'm letting it impact me. Um, out of fact, I go to a church named Impact. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm letting it all affect me now. And, and for where I am right now in my life, I, I can truly say that I'm now at the launching pad of where I'm going next. So it's going to be exciting.